Last week, last, week before last, um, we were in the study of the book of Judges, and we got to chapter 14 when uh, the man Samson was born. Samson was a Nazarite. He had those Nazarite vows. He was a strong man by, because of the Spirit of the Lord. He was an unusual character in the Bible. Uh, amazing, amazing. We studied last week, uh, time about that, uh, when he killed that lion, and he come back and got the honey out of that carcass, and, and how the, the, that's a type and picture of preaching and all kind of stuff like that. And um, then uh, his, he, uh, he killed all them, he, those, those guys and uh, those 30 sheets, and his daddy-in-law took his wife. He got mad and left, and while he was gone, his daddy-in-law gave his wife to his best friend. That would be like his best man at his wedding, got his wife. That's bad. And uh, stuff like that happens. And um, uh, so he's real mad, and he comes back, and he gets over it now, has time to think about it, and he wants to make things right. Now, we're going to study in the life of Samson. It's an amazing study. There's so much in this about human nature, it ain't even funny. And remember, when you're studying the book of Judges, the theme of the book of Judges is every man did that which was right in his own eyes. And this is what happens when you have no, no God, no Bible, no just absolute chaos. And uh, people just take the law into their own hands. So here we go, chapter 15, verse 1. He gets over his mad spell and he said, It came to pass within a while after in the time of wheat harvest. Um, that would be April, May. Their season's a little bit opposite from ours. So wheat harvest would be in what we know as spring that Samson visited his wife with a kid. That's a little goat to make things right with her. And he said, I will go into my wife into the chamber. But her father would not suffer him to go in. Now, here Samson comes back. He, he says, uh, man, I want to make things right. I love that, that woman, and I married her, and I want, I want us to be together. So he brings a kid offering, and he said, look, I've got... Uh, go, we're going to have a barbecue here and a big feast. Let's get back together, honey. I want to come back in there and, and mend you. And Daddy said, nope, ain't going to happen. You, you, now, he should have let them get back together. That's what he should have done. Uh, but every man does what's right in his own eyes, and he wasn't going to have it. Notice the kid. He brings something. It's always been a custom when a man's trying to win a woman over or be nice to her, he brings her. What will we do in this day? Bring what? Flowers. Why do women like flowers so good? It might be in their nature they're wanting him to give back what they lost, the Garden of Eden. I don't know. But uh, most of them like them. You run into a few that say, I'd rather have cash. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but uh, most of them, you know, when he shows up with a flower, so I mean, it, it does something. So he shows up with a kid, and uh, uh, he said, nope. And he, you ain't going into her. Now, notice verse number two. And her father said, here we go again with this crazy stuff. I verily thought that thou hated her. He said, I thought you hated her. So I gave her to your companion. And I thought you was done. Is not her younger sister fairer than she? She had a younger sister that's prettier than she is, which is often the case. I don't know how many in here is the older sister, how many is the younger sister. Uh, it's opposite. Well, her younger sister is prettier than she is. Take her. Now, here we go again with that crazy mess of them offering up their kids. Like the, the, the lots got, did that. Uh, the other guy did that. He said, here, take my daughter. I mean, it was crazy. When, when your morals have sunk that low that you just say, well, she's prettier. Take her. You, you can't have this, and I done gave her to somebody else. That's a messed up situation, y'all. That is messed up. And that, that qualifies for the Inquirer magazine uh, in, in, in our day and time, Dr. Phil and, and, and junk like that. And, but, uh, and Samson said, I don't want her. He, he wants his real wife. And he said, now Samson said concerning them, verse 3, now I'll be more blameless than the Philistine, though I do him a displeasure. So here they done made him mad again. This is not the man you want mad at you, let me tell you. I mean, I, you, it's not, you, the Spirit of God come on him, buddy. You better get out of the way. I, you know, it's like David when he got that rock and he slung it at, the, at Goliath. 
the Spirit of the Lord got in that rock. I'd rather a man have a, a, one of them AK-47 pointed at my head than a rock that God was in coming at me. I'm telling you, that guy, I mean, he, he, he got me and said, okay, you ain't gonna let me have my wife, huh? Jealousy's the rage of a man. He, he got mad and he swelled up like that and look what he done. This is an amazing character, y'all. Look at the personality of this guy. He didn't just go beat them all up. Look, verse four. Samson went and caught 300 foxes. Now, back up in verse two, uh, it said, um, uh, it was in Leviticus 18, 18, it was forbidden by the law for a man to have a woman and her sister. So he was going by the law there. Daddy didn't care because there was no king in Israel and everybody doing what was right in his own eyes. But then he gets mad and turns right around and goes and gets catches 300 foxes and took firebrands and turned tail to tail and put a firebrand in the midst between two tails. Now, think we read that casually, but you ever thought about what a task that was? Catching, um, every once in a while when I'm traveling, I saw one the other night, I was driving up the road, and it was real, about 12 or one o'clock at night when you see them things, and a red streak went across the road. That was a fox. There's a red fox, there's a gray fox in this part of the country. How many of you, any did or ever had somebody in your family fox hunt? Anybody? Okay, several of you. A uh, lot, they don't do it much anymore. I, I knew men that when I was growing up went fox hunting. And I'm telling you, them th they don't call them fox for nothing, brother. Them things are, are, are tricky and smart and fast. And I don't know how he did it. I don't know how he did it. Uh, maybe he set traps. Here, here, well, I caught 20 tonight. Well, there's 25. Well, I got 38 now. I got, it may have took him a period of time. He didn't just go out one day and catch 300 foxes, I don't reckon, unless it's supernatural. But he built them up and kept them in cages. 300. Then the guy takes two of them and ties their two tails together. How could you tie two foxes' tails together without somebody holding? You try that. <laughs> try to tie try two foxes. That'll claw your eyeballs out. And he, so he ties two of them together, and that makes 150 sets of foxes. Then the Philistines have all their garden, probably in one big old giant place, maybe hundreds of acres of corn that they were going to eat and wheat, corn and wheat, and he puts firebrands in between them and takes these two foxes and they're clawing and scratching and holds them with one eye and puts a fire between their two tails and lights a match and sets them on fire and turns them loose. Now, I would have loved to have seen that. You talk about something cool for a movie. Why don't Hollywood try to do that? I mean, that would be the coolest thing ever. Wouldn't you like to see two foxes with their tails on fire running two different directions in a cornfield? Uh, the corn maze, you know, you got them this time of year. So look what happened. Look what happened in these next. Uh, you kids love, listen, your, their, your Bible's the more exciting than any video game you've ever owned or had. Your Bible's more exciting than any Lifetime movie, any horror movie, Friday, 13th, Freddy, Krueger, all that old stupid amateur trash needs to be exactly where I say it, trash can. Um, Y'all ain't watching those scary movies this weekend. Or Don't do it. The devil's in them things. Amen? I said the devil's in them things. God didn't write them. God didn't inspire them. The devil inspired them. Christians ain't got no business fooling with stuff like that. We knocked on somebody's door down here the other night, last Saturday. She said, we stayed up all night, me and my kids. We watched Friday the 13th. We watched Friday the 13th. And I thought, uh, this woman needs to be, DSS needs to take her out of that home and, and give them somebody that's got a brain in their head. Kids ain't got no business seeing junk like that, demons and devils and, and demonic spirits like that. But anyway, uh, uh, he let them go in the standing corn of the Philistines, five, and burnt up both the shocks. That'd be like the wheat, the corn, we'd say shucks, uh, uh, and the wheat and the corn and the standing corn with the vineyards and olives. as everything they had to eat. You think they didn't get mad? I mean, good night. 
Look at this. He, here goes 150 sets of foxes running around with fire in them. I mean, put them out there in California and watch what happens. That burned the whole place down, buddy. There goes a fire, and there goes a fire, and there goes a fire. 150 sets of them running different directions. Burnt them up. What a, what a cool story, man. I mean, good night. Nothing dull about that book right there. And then look what happens. The Philistine get mad. So if you get me, I'll get you. You, you won't let me have my wife back? Blam, I'll burn your corn down. Okay, look what they did. Verse number six. And the Philistine said, who done this? And they said, Samson, the son-in-law of the Timnite, because he had taken his wife and given her to his companion. So the companion said, all right. If he caused this, they went up and burnt her and her father with fire. That's a bad scene, y'all. The Philistines come up and said, I heard you've caused all this damage down here and made Samson mad, and now look what he's done. Lock the doors, shut them in there, and set fire to the house and burn them up. That's awful. That's awful. That's bad. Burn that man and his woman, uh, his daughter, to death. That's the Hatfields and McCoys, buddy, back in the Bible. Feuds. Taking the law in your own hand. I'll get you back. You hit me, I'll hit you. And uh, verse 7, Samson said, Though you've done this, yet I'll be avenged of you. I ain't through with you yet. After that, I'll cease. And he smote them hip and thigh, verse 8, with a great slaughter. And he went down and dwelt in the top of the rock Etam. Now, um, uh, hip and thigh, I, maybe you can help me with that, but I, I mean, I just imagine he just knocked their brains out, kept, kept them jitsu, kung fu, everything, hit them this way, hit them that way, broke her arms, broke her legs. Lord have mercy, he, he, and, and he made a mess out of them things. Verse 9, the Philistines pitched in Judah and spread themselves in Lehi. And, and look at uh, uh, that rock that he got on. was like, got up on that big rock like Stone Mountain. And then verse 10, they said, we'll get you, buddy. The men of Judah said, why are you come up against us? And they answered, to bind Samson or we come up to do him as he'd done to us. Notice this in verse 11. Now he gets his own men turned against him. He's got all these Philistines against him, and they say, look, since you've caused all this trouble, we're going to get you. Here's this guy got his own people against him and the Philistines against him. He's got the Democrats and the Republicans fighting him, sort of. I mean, he, both sides are out to get him. And he's just a crazy nut that God's blessed the Spirit of God comes on once in a while or whatever. And he, Samson is a picture of a disobedient Christian. Samson never would really get his heart right. Samson never did repent of stuff. He kept on and on and on, and God had to finally take him out early. He's a picture of a Christian that won't live right and get right. So verse 11 said, 3,000 men of Judah, that's his own people, went to the top of the rock Etam and said to Samson, Knowest thou not that the Philistines are rulers over us? He said, you can't make these people mad. They'll kill us. Samson, do you realize what you're doing? They are over us. They'll kill every one of us. Man, you done went and made them mad, burnt their cornfields up, burnt their shocks up, burnt their wheat up, and their olive yard. Now you're going to get us all killed, boy. What's wrong with you stirring up war like this? Are you not got a brain in your head? Chill out, man. Make friends with them. Make peace treaties. Do everything you can to be nice to them. And he said this, and he said unto them, as they did to me, as I've done to them. They hit me, I hit them. If they hit me again, I'll hit them again. That's just the way he was. And they said unto him, we are come down to bind thee. Okay, buddy, we'll stop you, that we may deliver thee in the hand of the Philistines. And Samson said, well, just don't kill me. They said, we ain't going to kill you. Verse 13, they said, no, but i tell you what we're going to do. We're going to bind you fast and deliver thee into their hand, but surely we will not kill you. You're one of us. We ain't going to kill you. We're just going to give you to them so they'll leave us alone. And they bound him with two new cords and brought him up from the rock. Fourteen. Hold your finger. Now, let's catch up with our story here. Here's Samson sitting up there on the rock. He done killed a bunch of Philistines. He done smote them 
hip and thigh and all that, and he's sitting up there saying, that's what you get, bless God. Took my wife, now you burn her and killed her, and I'll never get to see her again, and you stole my woman, and that's what you get. And then his own men comes up, and they said, man, have you lost your ever-loving mind? Now they're going to kill us all. We're going to get you. He said, just don't, you ain't going to kill me, are you? And they said, no, but we're going to give you to them. He said, all right. I think he sort of knew what was up. And they took, it says cords, but you know it wasn't no little string. And they wrapped him up. He just stood there and let them. Wrapped him up with brand new cords. Wrapped him up, tied him up with ropes like a mummy. And they said, hey, there he is. Now, y'all going to leave us alone now? You ain't going to kill us now, right? We cool. Peace, peace, peace out. We'll see you. And they went on back down here, big chickens. Instead of helping them stand against God's enemy, they tried to be at peace with them. And you don't make peace with God's enemies. You don't make peace. It, it's just like all this, these terrorists and stuff like this, people. I'm, I'm against war. I hope we never have another war. I ain't for war. But you know, those people that, that are terrorists, you're never going to sit down and talk peace with them. It ain't going to happen. They don't think like that. History shows they don't think like that. And when you go into a place like that to fight a war, you don't go in to halfway do it. If you don't go in to finish the job, don't go. Because they don't quit. They don't give up. Listen, them people, they're, they're, it's in their blood. They don't think like me and you think. We want everybody to be nice and get along with each other and respect each other's property, and respect each other's race, religion, everything. That's what we, we believe like that, most people in this country. They don't think like that. They got a mindset of we're going to kill you because you're the infidel and you're in our way and there ain't no talking to them and there ain't no peace treaty to them and, and there ain't no, I mean, they understand two words, money and force, and that's it. And so Samson said, time me up. They tied him up, delivered him to the Philistines, and the weirdest thing happened. Look at verse 14. And when he came to Lehi, the Philistines shouted against him. And as soon as they started shouting against him, look what happened. The Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. That's a weird thing, isn't it? Now that means God had a special ministry for Samson fighting his enemies. Those were the enemies of God. And they were the enemies of God's people. And even though Samson was a messed up person in so many areas of his life, God still used him as an instrument to fight his enemies. Notice something else. The Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. You see that a lot in the Old Testament. The Spirit would come on him and leave. Come on him and leave. The Spirit did not permanently indwell in the, in the Old Testament like he does now. That's why the Lord said, when he, he has come, he shall be in you. When the Holy Spirit came, on the day of Pentecost, the Spirit of God came. He spiritually circumcised the, the Christian people. The body of Christ was formed a little before that, and then on the day of Pentecost, and they become permanently indwelt with the Holy Spirit. He don't come on us and leave us. He never will leave us nor forsake us. He's inside of us forever. Now, hold on. There is a sense when a preacher prays, that the Spirit of God will come on and give him a special anointing to preach, even though he's already in us. But he did not permanently indwell. That's why David said, Lord, don't take your spirit from me. That's why Saul said, the Spirit of the Lord departed from them. Things were different in the Old Testament. Um, you hear people all the time say, well, they were saved by looking forward to the cross. We're saved by looking back. To the cross. Every preacher says that because it sounds cute and religious. That ain't true. They didn't even know there was going to be a cross. They didn't know there'd be a cross in the Old Testament. They knew somebody was coming that would redeem Israel and get them and bring victory. They did not know Jesus was going to come and die on the cross. Nobody in the Old Testament looked forward to the cross. They didn't even know about it. The disciples didn't even know about it until he told them. We'll get into that some other time. But um, the Spirit of the Lord came on Samson, and he said mightily, and the cords that were upon his arms became as flax, that was burnt with fire and his bands loose from off his hand. Now, that old boy's son, his, his arms popped up about right there, about like mine. He, he popped up right there. Shut up. 
They ain't much of me, but it, what, I, what I have, is, and, and uh, he, he, that bicep popped up like that right there. I'm too little to have big muscles. I wouldn't look right. A little guy with big muscles looks weird to me. It's like a frog. Uh, but uh, his muscles popped up like that right there, and them, them, them cords became as flax. The, the best way I could describe that would be if you got a string and put a cigarette lighter on it. He said, well, that's the way them muscles did them ropes. Wouldn't you like to have seen that? Incredible Hulk. He just cheap imitation of that. Sam, the Spirit of the Lord comes on Samson. He goes, pow, them ropes break off, buddy. That's a man there, buddy. Hey, I would have loved to have seen that. Like I, I got to go, boom, you know, bust my jacket or something like that. I could try real hard. Uh, but uh, that's what he done. And you know what? Bam! The, the ropes fell off. That's a man there, buddy. Nothing sissy about that boy. Verse 15. And he found a new jawbone of an ass and put forth his hand and took it and slew a thousand men therewith. What a colorful guy. What a guy, man. What a guy. Who would think of tying foxes' tails together? He just looks around and says, Well, the old donkey got killed over here the other day. And, and the buzzards eat all his flesh off his, and there's his jawbone. And he picks up jawbone, that jawbone of that donkey that was little on one end and big on the other and sharp. And he just says, all right, bring it on. And I mean, there wasn't no music playing. There wasn't no girl in a bathing suit walks across with a sign saying Samson versus a Philistine. Uh, no rock music, no hype. Nobody's saying, he, he, they, he didn't say, come on out here, I'm going to get you. And he, he didn't have on purple panties like him guys. In, I mean, this is the real deal, brother. Never, never think a man's tough at a wear purple panties. Really, really. Get on there, they're acting all big and tough. Them, them, little, them little babies, that's all staged. That's all stage. They don't know, they don't know who's going to win them things. Oh, man, go out there and all greased up, and they got oil all over him, making him look real shiny and everything and all that. He ain't nothing but steroids. That's all they are, steroids. Nobody don't look like that in real life. Samson, he was real. Bring it on, buddy. Old blood, sweat, and guts all over the thing. Here comes five Philistines. He goes like this. Wow! There goes jaw bones and head and blood and guts everywhere. It wasn't like... WWL. This was the WWJ Judges World Wrestling Federation, and he comes back like that, bam, and knocks off some more head, and they knock each other down, kicks them like that, hits them. A thousand men, heaps upon heaps, the, verse, the next few verses say. Heaps upon heaps. Here, uh, 75, 85, bam, 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 out. 95, bam, 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 killed 100. 900 more to go. And they was a swinging swords and rocks and everything they could get their hands on. Buddy, he, I, that had to be supernatural. One man can't fight a 1,000 people. I don't care how strong he is. One man can't fight a 1,000 people. And uh, I, wouldn't you like to have seen that? Wouldn't you like to have just see? Maybe when we get to heaven, the Lord will let us see some stuff like that. I don't know. In 4D, 5, 10D. <laughs> ain't even been invented. Like you're there, brother. And here's Samson, and his arm goes like a weedy. Brrrr, just going down through there, mowing them guys down. My goodness, what a story. There's some heroes for our boys. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You don't want no hero like Colin Kaepernick, whatever that nut's name is. Uh, you, you, they want a hero like some of these men in the Bible. And, and old Samson, he knocked them, brother. He knocked their brains out. He knocked their heads off. He, Lord have mercy. And when he got done, he done what all athletes do. He wanted Gatorade. See verse 18? And he was sore athirst. He said, y'all got any Gatorade? He called on the Lord and said, Thou hast given this great deliverance into the hand of thy servant, and now shall I die for thirst? Fall in the hand of uncircumcised, that sounds like Jonah, don't it? He said, uh, 
Now, Lord, you've let me kill a thousand men, and here I'm about to die because I ain't got nothing to drink. You're just going to let me die? And notice what the Lord did. But God clave a hollow place that was in the jaw, and there came water there out. And when he had drunk, his spirit came again, and he revived. That's what a revival is, spirit came again. Wherefore he called the name of that thereof Hakor, which is in Lehi unto this day. What about that? What about that? Isn't that something? Now, there's all kind of things here. The first thing I want to notice, and we'll, we'll take about just a few more minutes and I'll be done. First thing I want to notice is the insignificant thing of a jawbone of an ass. That's not the first time the Lord used a jawbone of an ass. Remember Balaam? Old Balaam coming through there, and he was riding through there. If you read your Bible, you know what I'm talking about. And, he, and, the, and his donkey, he wouldn't go, he wouldn't go, he wouldn't go, he wouldn't go, he wouldn't go. And uh, he said, man, what's wrong with you? And that thing turned around and said, uh, I ain't going. Can't you see what's in front of us? And he spoke to him. Now, that's a picture of how God can use anything or anybody, not many wise, not many noble. The Lord uses the base things of this world to confound the mighty and big shots. You know, God hardly ever uses a big shot. God hardly ever uses some real big shot, important prince, king, president, world ruler, very seldom. If, if you, let me ask you a question. If you really, really, really wanted to hear from God this Sunday, and you want to say, I want to know what God's saying to people today, where would you go? I'd go where I go every Sunday, right here at church. You wouldn't go to Washington, D.C. Would you go to the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill to say, what does God have for us today? No. They don't have a clue. God uses a jawbone of an ass. That's that right there. Just an old good for nothing, not many wise, not many noble. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? The Lord, he uses common people and common things. The Lord don't, he's not impressed with big shots. The Lord's not impressed with Hollywood and New York City and all that. Let me tell you something. If I really wanted to hear from God, and I was just a layman, I wasn't a preacher, if I really wanted to hear from God, I'd find me one of these country churches out here somewhere where an old boy loved the Lord and believed the book and had been praying all week, and I'd go listen to him Sunday. Really, that's where you're going, that's where you're going to hear from God. Keep, somebody's keeping the sheep. All through the Bible, the Lord took them as they kept the sheep, as they kept the sheep. God's going to talk, that's who he talks to. The jawbone of an ass. He gave that water, and notice that what Samson used to kill him is the same thing God used to feed him. So he, he slew the Lord's enemies with that, and then the Lord turned around and used that to give him water. I've, it's over and over and over and over and over and over. I could tell you story after story after story. That verse says, cast your bread on the waters. They'll find it after many days. I was telling Kelly, I think it was a week ago, I had something go wrong. I don't even know, that, but everything that goes wrong in my house, when my water tore up, when, uh, when I have a, re uh, uh, a roof leak, or when one of my cars tear up, when one of my cars tear up, I call an old boy that's just an old shade tree mechanic and he fixes it for me quick, about a third of the price I'd pay. You know what that is? That's all that preaching I'd done 15 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, coming back to me. And it's a blessing. When I have something tear up, I call, when, when I have something I need to work on, I'll call somebody, it's a friend of mine, and they'll say, brother, I, I know my... When we go on our, our uh, vacation once a year, that place in Florida, that's a preacher friend of mine, owns a condo in Florida, and he lets us have it for free. That's the reason we go there. It's free, and it's a good time. You get away for a few days, and you know what he told me? He said, Brother Danny, your preaching helped me so much years ago. That's the least I can do. You know, that comes back. That's that jawbone of that giving me water. If you'll live right and serve God and witness, cast your bread on the water, You'll find it after many, many days. Amen. Happens all the time. Happens all, and that's not why you do it. I don't say, "Oh boy, I'm going to preach so people give me a free condo." That you don't. That never crosses your mind. 
When you're up in the woods praying and seeking God, you're trying to help people. You're trying to help people. About to, like these kids we got, you know, uh, we got uh, have three now. And, I, and somebody said, well, Brother Danny, uh, uh, what do you think about that? And here's what I think about it. I think it'd be wrong for me not to help them kids if I can. I think it'd be wrong. Ain't nothing to pray about. Ain't nothing to pray about. It's wrong not to help somebody if you can. And you know what? You'll find it after many days. The Lord will bring it back to you. If you're stingy and selfish, you're going to be all alone one of these days. You're going to be all alone. But if you give and give and give and give, it will come back to you. God used that jawbone that he had fought with all them years to water him. He sure did. Stingy people will be all alone and miserable when they get old. I told my girls, I said, now listen, when I get old, you're going to take care of me. You owe me one. I took care of y'all. They said, you'll probably be taking care of us, Daddy. I said, yeah, I probably will. Uh, uh, but I said, I'll be visiting y'all in rest home. But I, uh, it'll, it'll come back to you. It'll come back to you. Notice what it said in verse 20. He judged Israel in the days of the Philistines 20 years. That old boy was a judge for 20 years. And he couldn't die till God got through with him. Don't forget that. If you're doing God's will, you can't even get killed till God gets done with you. And when he's done with you, who cares? Who wants to live if the Lord's done with you? Ain't that right? All right. Any questions on our story tonight or comments? That's an amazing story. I ought to act that out. Put that in a Christmas play or something. Reindeer, Santa Claus, Samson with the jawbone of an ass. Kills a thousand dwarfs. <laughs> we cut our, do what? Yeah, let's do that. Jawbone of a reindeer. He slew Santa Claus and all his, all his seven dwarfs. Anybody? Right quick. That's a play there, buddy. That's a good play. Amen. All right, let's stand.